Hi there, I'm Jeff Johnson. I serve on the English faculty at CLC and I also direct Verse Like Water, the visiting poet program of Central Lakes College. You know, one of the vivid pleasures in my life is making sure that CLC students have constant experiences with great art. That's why I ordered 150 tickets to get some of us to Hamlet next spring. That's why I'm taking my classical mythologist uh, down to the Minneapolis Institute of Arts at the end of the month. And I am super excited that I'll be hosting next week the American poet Brenda Hillman. Uh, she is going to kick off the 11th year of the series, and I hope you come. It's going to be October 12th at noon in the Chalbert, free and open to the public. In case you don't know it, uh, Verse Like Water is a reading series devoted exclusively to poets only. And we have brought some of the greatest poets, over 30, in the last decade or so uh, to the Brainerd Lakes region. That includes people with U.S. Poet Laureate uh, appointments. That includes people with Pulitzer Prizes and National Book Awards. Just, just the greats, the stars. And the readings really are something. Even if you don't like poetry, you should uh, think about giving it, a, giving it a chance. Again, that reading starts at noon. It'll run about 40, 45 minutes. And then we'll have a book signing. We'll have some of our beautiful books there. And there'll be a craft talk at 1.30. Uh, also on the Chalbert. Those are always smaller and more intimate. And sometimes they are as transformative and amazing as the reading. This time out, a very dear friend of mine, Dr. Brian Laidlaw, is going to be introducing her. He's kind of the co-host or the guest host. He is a musician, also a lyric poet, and um, he's young and cool, quite unlike me. I hope to see you in the Chalberg, and we're also uh, bringing the Nigerian uh, poet Chris Abani. That will be on November 16th uh, next month as winter starts uh, descending on us. We'll warm up our hearts with uh, poetry. Hope to see you next Wednesday. For Seasonal Works with Letters on Fire by Brenda Hillman. Seasonal Works with Letters on Fire concludes Brenda Hillman's tetralogy on the four elements of classical thought. She steers wildly but ably through another day of teaching, a ceremonial equinox, the distress of bee colony collapse, space junk, political obstruction, military drones, administrative headaches, and everything in between the newt under the laurel and the herring purring through the eelgrass don't escape her arc of acuity. Seasonal Works appears to be one of the most inclusive books a hyperactive imagination could wring out of the actual. The symbols of the alphabet come alive and perform acrobatic marvels. Phonetical bird calls join in on cue. The mighty challenges of now are fully engaged. The book performs an anarchic music and stimulates a craving for undiluted love and a rollicking fury for justice that only its widely variant forms can sustain. This is a unique work. Its letters are on fire. In high desert under the drones. We are Western creatures. We can stand for hours in the sun. We read poetry near an Air Force base. Is poetry pointless? Maybe its points are moving as in a fire. The enlisted men can't hear. Practice drones fly overhead to photograph our signs. They look like hornets, Vespula, with dangly legs dipping in rose circles with life grains. They photograph shadows of the hills where coyotes' eyes have stars. They could make clouds of white writing, cilia, knitting, soul weaving, spine without nerves, dentures of the West, volcano experiments, geometry, weather, breath, and salt. Young airmen entering the base stare from their Hondas. They are lucky to have a job in an economy like this. The letters of this poem are also lucky to have a job, for they are insects and addicts and thieves. Volcanic basalt recalls its rock star father. Creosote and sage, stubby taupe leaves greet the rain. We hold our signs up. We're all doing our jobs. Trucks bring concrete for the landing strip they've just begun. A cliff stands out in winter. Twin ravens drop fire from its eyes. My inner life is not so inner and maintains the vascular system of a desert plant. I'm grateful to Samuel Beckett and to my high school boyfriend, whose drunk father yelled when we closed the door and read the unnameable during the Tet Offensive. 
They prepared me for this. Outside the base, we see borax mines in the distance, the colors of flesh, brown, black, peach, pink, bronze. We stand there as the young airmen settle into their routine. The Gnostics noted it is difficult to travel between spheres. You've had to memorize the secret names, and the unnameable haunts every aspect of your routine. The names grow heavier as you carry them between the spheres. (laughs) 